what's up Brandon Ears, my name is Brandon Gozar, and today we're going to be talking about my top 10 ways to save money at Walt Disney World and go to Disney World cheap. Now if you're just stumbling upon this video, hit that subscribe button to join the most magical family on the internet today. The Brandon Ears, we'd love to have you and let's get right into the video. So number 10 is knowing the best times to go. So if you go in the off season, not only are you experiencing less crowds and able to do more and not having to shoulder bump everybody, but you're not having to like run into everybody. You're not having to be like, oh, excuse me. You're not having to wait like five hours for freaking Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Not only that, but to encourage more crowds and getting more money in and more people spending money in the parks, Disney lowers the ticket prices. So on the off season, not spring break, not summer, not the holidays, Disney World is far less crowded and far less expensive to get into. And more specifically, the most cheapest times to go to Walt Disney World is early January to about mid-February, and then mid-August to about late September. Now number nine is staying off-site. I know, I know, everybody wants to stay in a Disney hotel, but the hotels surrounding Walt Disney World are really, really nice and they go for really, really cheap because those hotels need to do something to get their guests in there because of the Walt Disney World hotels surrounding it. So they give great perks and they're really cheap and you'll probably be paying like half of what you are for the exact, sorry, she wouldn't be quiet and I think it's because she wants to be in the video. So they're really cheap and they're basically giving you more for what you would pay at a Walt Disney World Resort, if that makes sense. Like a basic room at a Disney World Resort could be $120, where where one step up at a, a hotel offsite could be about half of that. You're just gonna wanna look for hotels around the Orlando, Kissimmee, and like celebration area. Those are gonna be the hotels that are closest to Walt Disney World and are cheap and off-site. I've actually stayed at a couple of these before and I absolutely loved it. If you're not like full, your heart isn't set on a Disney hotel, go for off-site. I suggest going on websites like Expedia and TripAdvisor and customizing and filtering your search to your budget and your personal needs. And those are some of the best websites that help me find hotels off-site that are amazing and they have reviews and you can go check it out for yourself. So for number eight, I get it. You want to stay at a Walt Disney World Resort, you have been planning this vacation forever, you don't want to leave the magic and you just want to stay on site and be surrounded by all of the Disney magic and everything close, very, very close to you. I get it. Well, some of my favorite Disney resorts include the Disney All-Star Resorts. They have all-star movies, they have all-star music, and they have all-star sports. And these are the hotels that I stay at actually mostly because they're cheap, but they still come with like a little Disney fix to it. And you're staying on property and the outside of the resort and like the courtyard. Everything is just so Disney themed and it's a Disney hotel and I think they run about 110 to like $130 a night, which is pretty nice for a Disney resort. And then here's a list of other resorts that I highly recommend for you that are fairly cheap when you're speaking about Disney. Number seven, if you're flying out of state to Orlando, I recommend Kayak, Travelocity, and Cheap Air for the best cheap flights. How do you think I flew out Sabrina every time that she visited? Because <laughs> of the cheap websites. <laughs> Number six, tickets. Don't wait until you get to the front of the park to buy your dang tickets! Did that sink in? There's great deals for a lot of people when it comes to buying Disney tickets. If you're planning on visiting the parks more than one day, opt in for the multi-day ticket package. A typical ticket for kids ages 10 and up and adults runs you about $105 for Magic Kingdom. And a Magic Kingdom ticket for ages 3 to 9 is about 99 that's not much of a difference. However, opting in for a multi-day package ticket lowers the ticket price for an adult to $99 and for a child to $93. And then opting in for that three-day park ticket lowers that 105 ticket to 96 and that $99 ticket to 90. Those aren't the only deals included either. Disney offers deals to AAA members and CAA members, sometimes upwards of $20 off. You can also visit the Disney ticketing site for more tickets that you might not have known that 
that you were eligible for. I just kind of included the more popular ones, but they have a lot of discounts on their ticketing site, so go check that out before you go to Disney. So not only does purchasing tickets ahead of time save you time in line, but it also gives you great discounts. Number five, have a meal plan, but only if you're a big Disney foodie like I am. Guests who stay at Disney resorts are now eligible for two dining plans. The first is the Magic Your Way Package Plus dining plan, which costs as little as $123 per person per day. I know that sounds a lot, but that plan also covers one table service meal per day, one counter service meal per day, and one snack per person per day, which can be a fantastic deal for foodies and people who love character dining and dinner shows. Not to mention the free discounts and vouchers. The second option is the Magic Your Way Package Plus Quick Service Dining Plan. Wow, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Which includes two counter service meals, two snacks, and one refillable beverage per person per day. Again, a mouthful. <laughs> Literally. Which can be a fantastic value for most families as well as the discounts and vouchers. I cannot stress that enough for the discounts and vouchers that you get having a meal plan. But I also can't stress enough that if you're not a big foodie and you're not going with like a big family, the Disney dining plan might be a waste of money for you. So just keep that in mind. And if you're not staying on site, you can also check out this fantastic playlist that I made of my top five snacks under $5 in the Disney parks. You can get some pretty great stuff for under $5 and for really cheap, really, really cheap. Also bring in your own water bottles with you and fill up those water bottles throughout the day at the various water fountains around the parks. Number four, bring everything that you're gonna need for your vacation from home. Make a list. Toiletry, toiletries, sunscreen, plastic bandages for like blisters and such, snacks for the road, over-the-counter medications, and refillable water bottles and etc etc never buy anything from Disney that you can already bring from home that you're going to need on your trip because everything that you're gonna buy like over-the-counter meds are gonna be basically like doubled if not tripled the price so bring those from home dogs <laughs> whenever I try and film a video just dogs number three be careful about park hopping. Don't spend that extra cash if you don't need to, especially if you're spending the day at Magic Kingdom. You will not get everything done in one day at any of the parks, but I can guarantee you that you will not get all the cool stuff done in one day at Magic Kingdom. It's just not gonna happen. I guarantee that. The only true half day parks are Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom. And even then, there's just so much to do. I can comfortably promise you that you're not gonna get everything done in one day. I mean, you can fit an entire Disneyland and then some into Magic Kingdom. Don't waste your money if you don't have to. Go th to these parks throughout the day because it's about 65 more dollars for a park hopper. That's really not worth it. Unless you're like me who goes all the time and you know what you want to do and then you want to jump over to the next park. If you're just going like your first time or you're going and you haven't been in a while, take it all in. Enjoy it. Do everything that you can and make the most out of that park during your day. And then go on to the next one. Number two. If you're really strapped for cash, let your photos be your keepsakes. Don't go all crazy now and spend a quarter of your last week's paycheck on a Mickey Mouse hoodie. Control the impulse that you may have to spend more than you can afford and take some pictures. Those are probably gonna be better for you than anything that you can buy at the park because they will document your memories and you can look back on them and just remember how much of a magical day you had. And then number 10, you can also check out this video right here of some really, really cool free stuff that you can bring home on your next Disney trip. For free. I know I said free twice, but I really wanted to emphasize these souvenirs are free. Well, all right, Brendan, here's those are my 10 top tips for saving money at Walt Disney World. Is there anything that I left out? Leave it in the comments below so that everybody in the comment section can enjoy your tips and advice. If you enjoyed these tips and you found them at all helpful, you can support me and the channel by going to patreon.com slash brandongozrar or a link is in the description. My name is Brandon Gozrar. I make a brand new Disney video every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with Wednesdays for being 6 p.m. Eastern.
Eastern Standard Time live streams, a lot of the times from the parks. So go ahead and hit that notification button to be notified when I go live and when I upload my brand new Disney videos, usually around 4 p.m. And if you're not yet, hit that subscribe button to join the most magical family on the internet today, the Brandoneers. Here's two videos that I picked especially for you, and I leave you with peace, love, unity, and respect. Bye guys, see you Wednesday for a live stream.